Good evening, members of Spiritually Cryptid Encounters here on my group on Facebook. Those who follow me on YouTube and those who follow my uh, short reels on TikTok under Ape I just want to talk to you all a little bit tonight before I go into this area. Uh, it's been a while since I've been out here. Since uh, I have been recuperating for about four months. Now I'm just enjoying a lot of you. And to, I want to talk to some people first. Uh, for those people that have come at me in a negative way. The only thing I have to say is. You're clueless. And you don't know what you're dealing with. And what I mean by that. Is. You played the games. Time and time again fake profiles, affiliations, uh, you were in cahoots all along, in which I already knew this, you know, when uh, you're spiritually blessed, how you doing brother Joe uh, Cervantes, when you're spiritually blessed, you just know things, you know, when you've been through ups and downs in life, you know what you did to overcome the situations you were in, uh, and, and saying that, uh, in saying that, uh, I just want to say that there was a lot of people that came up against me here in uh, in the spiritual uh, community, paranormal community, cryptic community. And the only thing I can say is karma is not good for those those kind of individuals that come up against a good person in a negative way. That's why I'm here right now. I'm here because... The things uh, that they dwell in, I'm not afraid of. And if the things that I'm not afraid of uh, can't harm me because I'm being protected by a higher power, then what they dwell in is going to be their downfall because that's what the, that's what they're about. You know, people that don't know what the hell they're talking about. People that had never placed their life in the line in any kind of way, shape, or form. People that are that are that are clueless when it comes down to the the paranormal. When it comes down to uh, the battle between the unseen spiritual war, they are clueless. Uh, they they just want to put an agenda, and their the only agenda is about fake stories. And about money, about the tithe donations, because that's what they're about. That's all they have to offer. They they don't have the the wisdom or knowledge to offer anything else. So the only thing they can do is make a uh, come up with fake stories, time and time again, because they never been out there. Uh, I see brother brother Joe here. He's been he's been in the military. He's been in combat. He knows how we train. He knows that we train offensive and defensively during the day and during the night. So for me, coming out into the woods by myself in the darkness, that's natural for me, you know, uh, because that's how we used to train in the military. We've been in areas where it's been pitch dark. And what I'm talking about is in the desert out in uh, in Saudi Arabia, in the near the Iraqi borders. Where you literally have to use PVS sevens just to see because it's that pitch of a dark. So, you know, you can't see what's around you, but you can sense when you can sense uh, what's around you and you feel the energies that are around you. It, it makes your senses a keen. I'm making this video because since I've been recuperating, I've been seeing all the the works that people. Have been coming up against me. I've been I've been witnessing this. The only thing I have to say for those individuals that the the karma is not going to be good for them. That's all I have to say. And I don't wish nothing bad upon nobody. But if that's what they dwell in, hey, that's that's what what the payment is going to be. That's what they're going to receive. Uh, the downfall, their downfall is going to be by their own demise. That's that's all I have to say about them. 
Uh, but besides that, people don't understand. They don't understand where I come from. They don't, they don't understand my upgr- up, upbringing. They don't understand the people that, that paved the way for me. Uh, that I, I, I witnessed things through what they were trying to teach me. But eventually, everybody's got to choose a path of how they want to be. So, I had to choose my own path of how I want to be. And that's that's to have Jesus Christ in my life. That's to maintain the love foundation. And what, in, what I mean by that is a real love foundation. A really, a real heavenly love foundation. Not just words like a lot of people just say. And uh, of what I witness, how can, people that talk about peace, they talk about God, but the works that they do are evil because they come up against people in a negative way. In due time, to those individuals, uh, in due time, uh, all I got to say is that where I live to where they live is not too far away. And all in due time. Uh, and all, and all due, in due time, you know, people happen to cross paths with one another. Uh, and here I, here I go. I'm, I'm here in this location right now talking to y'all. I can't see. I mean, I can only see the, the trail here. But what I see is a lot of lights now because... I guess they they built something over here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the camera around. Oh, I'm just gonna keep it on me. So if something surfaces up spiritually, I'm not here because I'm making a spiritual stance. Also, brothers and sisters, uh, whoever's viewing, uh, there's been activity happening outside my home where this. Things that are out here, or the, the the DDN or whatever, they try to surface us up around my home. So I'm coming into their territory right now. So if I sense anything, I'll let y'all know if I see any kind of movement. Uh, but the only thing I'll be able to do is try to move the camera forward because I can't even see. Uh, I mean, I got a flash. I might have a little flashlight here. Okay, I'm going to flip the camera around, y'all. So y'all can see where I'm at. It's kind of muddy right now. I think this area, is, it is very muddy. So I don't even know if I'm going to be able to, to go into this area. But since I'm already here, uh, y'all can see way down there, uh, there they built, I believe it's a prime, it's a big building for prime. So in this area, there was a lot of activity happening because of the construction that, that was happening in this, in this land, in which I believe there could have possibly been some, some, uh, so native graves that were built over because of the activity that was happening here. Uh, the, the, I guess the spirits were upset because they were building what used to be their land, their territory, right? So they built something over there. Let me see how I can walk through here to get a little bit closer, but it is kind of muddy. And I don't want to get my feet muddy. But y'all can see the building over there. Okay. I don't know how I got a light on there. It's just on by itself. So I'm just going to flip the camera over to my side. Because I can't cross that path. The, the path is, is very muddy. And I don't got the, the proper equipment. I'm hearing voices right now, right here. Uh, I got a couple of questions. If there's anybody out here in, in the spirit, spirit form. 
Are you all upset because they built a building in your land? Or you're just upset when people come into your territory? Yeah, it's very muddy there, guys. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to enter that area. But anyways, I'm going to flip the camera over to me. I'm going to have to wait till it dries up. Because it's very muddy. Uh, like I was saying, uh, there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of, uh, how should I say, trans transactions against me. Where uh, people were reporting my post, reporting my content, just like before. You know, uh, all I got to say is, all in due time. All in due time, everything will be taken care of. That's all I got to say about that. And to me, you know, it becomes a personal thing. It, per it becomes personal when when people come up against you, be coming after you after you trolling you for about a year. It becomes personal, in which you know that's all I gotta say. It becomes personal. Uh, but there's a, a lot of vehicles over here at this building. That they're coming out. I don't know what they're doing. But I'm just going to stay here for a little bit longer. So what's been happening is this, brothers and uh, sisters. Joe, we've got, we got sister Elizabeth. Is I've been maintaining the Love Foundation regardless of the trolls that are coming after me. Uh, regardless of, of whatever, you know. Uh... I'm just tired. You know, I fight spiritually all the time. I've been fighting spiritually all my life. You know, I've been a survivor. When the odds are stacked against me, I overcome the odds. You know, I've been doing it all my life. It's just some of these people think that it's okay to mess around and there's no consequences for their actions. And I'm just here to say that there is consequences. I just don't have to do nothing about it, you know. Uh, I'm talking about the trolls that have been trolling me, reporting me content on a spiritual encrypted encounter. Sorry, doing uh, Tia Rachel. Tia Rachel, how you doing? Yeah, what happened is when I was in that area, I know we're all in the state of Texas. So normally when there's a, a child abduction, right? Something it'll show child abduction, and that's what happened when I was in the in those woods. On my phone, it said a child abduction something. So I shut I uh, pressed the button and shut it off. So I don't know if that's what happened to y'all. If if that showed up on your on your uh, on your phones, because we're all in in the state of Texas, right? So if I push the button where it was saying child abduction then y'all should have been able to push the same button too because that's uh, Texas wide. And that's what happened when you lost the connection. It's because the child abduction thing popped up on my live feed. So I just pressed the button to take it off. But yeah, it's very muddy in there that I had, I couldn't, I couldn't follow that trail. But, uh, we know how, what what's up like in the real real Grand Valley. I, I remember those door roads over there. Uh, there's this cars passing through. Uh, the door roads over there by by that uh, what was it? By the canals, those crazy activity there happened there all the time. I used to be in uh, in cross country. And I would run towards the, the junkyard. The junkyard in Raymondville. The old one. 
I remember I was I was over there running. It was like around six six thirty. Uh, Mister Spinoza, the old bus driver, the one that used to own, uh, own the the bakery. Uh, he would tell would tell me not to go to that area after after five thirty or six because things would happen there. You know, his. His little land was right beside the junkyard. I mean, be, beside the beside the the uh, the dumpe, you know, the where, where they dump the trash. We used to go feed his pigs because he was a uh, the padrino of my of my primo Michael. And I remember I, I went jogging over there to those roads uh, by the junkyard, and. It was, I didn't have no, no, no clock on me or nothing, but I know it was late because the sun was already setting. And I remember I was there standing by, by the barbed wire, uh, fence, uh, checking out his pigs. And next thing, next thing you know, I start hearing all kinds of voices, like moanings and stuff coming out, out of the, uh, out of the, 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 uh, the dump yard itself, like you could hear women and children, like they were crying, like they were like they were in pain, you know. So, you know, I took up running. I started running back, and as I was running back down those dirt roads, back to you know back to town, I remember uh, a pack of dogs started chasing me, black dogs, and they were coming at me. It looked like they had rabies. Because foam was coming out of their mouth. I remember jumping on, onto a, a mesquite tree that was there. And I was on top of the mesquite tree. And those dogs were just growling underneath the tree looking at me. And the sun was setting. So when they took off back to where they're, wherever they came from. That's when I, I, <laughs> I booked it. I ran as hard as I could back into town to make it... Uh, into in, into town safely. Yeah, apparently there's something going on here at the at the Mayborn Center. Yeah, there's a lot of cars. They're probably looking at me like, "What is this guy doing out here?" How you doing, Sister Dawn? Yeah, it's pretty muddy in that area right now. But I remember the the shadow figures. Uh, out there in uh, in Bramaville, Texas, yeah, there was a lot of bultos over there, man. I remember over there by the Willimar, by where the light is. There's a there's a, a one blinking light uh, by Willimar, and uh, I was walking home because I had gotten stranded out there. And I, you know, I said, like, ah, I could see the lights from town. He's not gonna. I'll make it there pretty fast, man. I was tired, and. I could see something walking, following me, along the along the edge of the wood line, and it was a shadow figure, you know, following me. So when I got to the to the blinking light, the the shadow figure that was following me was inside the the the, the barbed wire fence of that land, and they were just looking at me, and I was looking at it. So you know, I kept on walking. I got to the light and I tur turned to right. The as 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 I turn right down that road, it will lead to where the the Silvas used to live. Uh, what was the name? Uh, what was her name? Uh, Chivo, uh, and his brother. They lived the further further that ways, but I remember seeing the the dark shadow figure. You know, that's not the first one that I would see there. I would see him all the time. I see him in church. I would see him in the little parish hall, especially in church, and in the Lady of Guadalupe. I would see him there all the time. I'm talking about the old Lady of Guadalupe. When it was made out of wood, I would see him. In a, I would see him uh, on top of the when when the priest be talking, and the people be kneeling down and praying. I would see him on top of the of the ceiling. Flying around, going into people. 
It's crazy. You know, I guess you could say I was a little bit different than everybody else. I mean, I'm more sure there was other people that had those uh, spiritual abilities, but that was my spiritual ability to be able to see uh, what's around me spiritually. Just like, That's the same ability I have right now that's been with me for a very long time. Uh, I remember there was this, this nun <laughs> that came all the way from, I guess, uh, from that land. And her name was Sister Teresa. She, I believe that was the same person uh, called Mother Teresa. Uh, because I was just a kid. Uh, but that woman right there, she had, you could say, she was, to me, what I felt, what I sensed within her, that she was demonized. I remember... The first time I ever met her, I was reading a book in one of the community, uh, one of the classes. I was reading a book. The door opened and she's just looking at me, and she points at me. They come and get me, and she drags me down the hallway of the prayer show. and she throws me in the closet, locks me up in the closet for no reason. I'm in there for about two hours, three hours. She opens up the door and she says, are you afraid? And I said, no, God is with me. And she gets mad and closes the door. And I stayed there for a couple of hours. She did that for about the whole summer. The whole summer, every day that I was going to that, because I would go there for summer school, uh, for the summer, because we'd go to the pool. Every day during the summer, she was doing that. I would tell my mom what she was doing, and she would say, you're probably doing something wrong. That's why she's doing that to you. But she had an unclean spirit in her because I could see it looking. I could see looking the unclean spirit looking through her, you, through her to me, you know. But even though all the attempts that she tried to install fear in me, it didn't work because I knew that that God is with me just like like I know that God is with me right now I'm just here to give people understanding you know I got targeted by the the crypto community because I don't believe the, the Bigfoots are 100% flesh I got targeted by the dogman community because I don't believe the dogmen are 100% flesh uh, all these people that, that believe this, these beings are 100% flesh, well, I'm, I'm just here to, uh, to burst their bubble. They're not 100% flesh, just like I've been saying all along. They're here in disembodied form. They're, they're demonic. They, they, they take the beastly form for the fear factor. They take that form, they manifest into it, so you can believe that it's something real. If they can get you to believe and the fear factor is there, then you have a spiritual opening for it to spiritually attack you because they're demons. So that's what happened, brothers and sisters. What I'm saying right now is literally I got targeted by the crypto community because they couldn't handle the truth of what I was saying. And they've already lost a lot of people in the crypto community because... They were believing uh, what they were dealing with was 100% flesh. So they're not here no more because these demonic forces took those individuals out. Because they were believing that they were real. So the, the, the disembodied demonic Nephilim, you want to call them legion or whatever. They're only here for one reason and one reason only. You know, they, they dis despise us because we were made under God's image and we're children of the light. And we have an opportunity to make it into the kingdom of heaven. They don't have the opportunity because they got casted down. Right? The one third got casted down. Uh, the washers, they created the Nephilim, they became disembodied Nephilim. They can't make it into heaven because they're, they're not a God's creation. 
So those are the things that are roaming around earth that are, are jealous and envy of us that they don't want people to awaken. They don't want people to, to wake up. Uh, they don't want people to know of their existence, that they're, they're amongst us in disembodied form, uh, deceiving people. And you know what they deceive people for? You know, they got something in common. A hellhound has red eyes. The, the, the hat man has red eyes. A werewolf, red eyes. A bigfoot, red eyes. The mothman, red eyes. The bed like creature that was running roaming in the valley had red eyes. Or the big bird had red eyes. I'm just here to tell you that all that is demonic of nature. And you could say there are like uh, soul collectors. So their main mission is to deceive people to collect their soul because they're believing in them. And these people that are believing in them, I mean, shit, they even, they even leave gifts for them. <laughs> it's kind of like, like worshiping them, right? That they leave gifts for them. Sooner or later, uh, they'll come for them because they're believing in them. Sooner or later, they'll come for them because they just want their soul. That's all they want. They, they want their soul. That's that's what they want. If they can, they can deceive people to believe in them, that's a one-win situation for them. My question to y'all is, wouldn't you want to know how to fight this unseen forces? Here in Spiritual Encrypted Encounters, I've been telling y'all for a very long time. To always maintain a love foundation. Forgiveness is part of that love foundation. The reason you have to forgive is because it'll cut it'll it'll cut any opening that they might have to unforgiveness, which could be hatred, anger, vengeance, etc. When you forgive, that's that's a sign of love because you're forgiving. As you forgive, the Heavenly Father blesses you with the Spirit who gives a discernment. And which it'll guide you spiritually. But yes, people don't, do not want to know the truth. Uh, they'd rather listen to fake stories they rather listen to, uh, how should I say, what ifs. But they don't want to open up spiritually. They don't want to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because then they don't know the truth. When they have the relationship with Jesus Christ. When they thought that they wasn't bonded in any kind of way. They're going to know then that there wasn't kind of bondage because when they try to start having a relationship with Jesus Christ, whatever's got a bondage doesn't want to let them go. So they're going to come in numbers. And if these individuals are not spiritual ready, they're going to get overcome by this unseen enemy. Let me go back inside the vehicle because there's so many cars here. They're making all kinds of noise. I don't know it's interrupted in the video, but I'm gonna go back in, in the vehicle and speak from inside the vehicle. Here we go. Here we go. I hope y'all can hear me, hear me better. I know I talk kind of loud, uh, but that's what happens when you're a tanker in the military. But yes, I try to go out there. Y'all seen that, guys? But the obstacle that was out there was mud. There was a lot of mud in that path, so I couldn't walk through. Uh. 
Yeah, brothers and sisters. Like I said, uh, I don't know uh, what's in the future with for spiritual encrypted encounters. I'm going to continue to do my videos, continue to do my works. Uh, but all these people that have come up against me in a negative way, all, all I can say is it all in due time, you know. Uh, and I'm going to leave it up to God. Whatever, whatever he decides to do, it's, it's beyond my control. Uh, but yes, that's nothing new for me. Uh, all throughout my life, I've run into some very wicked people. And I'm not talking about the chumps that play games on on Facebook that troll. Those are chumps. Those, those, those are, that's, they're like maggots compared to what I have faced spiritually as I've grown and even till now of what I've faced. They're like chump change compared to these other things that I face. Uh, you know, I can't do nothing for them. You know, they're, they're, they're being bonded. Like playing little games are being used. So be it. You know, I don't got time to be playing games with nobody. Uh, but I just decided to do a video today just to, just to test the waters out because I haven't been out here for a while. Uh, when I got here, I could hear... Somebody's saying something right here beside the, the vehicle, but like I said, there's a lot of vehicles here where I'm at, so it might have been an echo coming from somewhere. I do not know. Uh, I'm just here to tell you, all brothers and sisters, that ever since I've had spiritual encrypted encounters, my mission has always been to help out the members of spiritual encrypted encounters or to wherever I post my footage, my photos or videos is to bring awareness of the unseen spiritual war that's happening amongst us. Uh, that was, that's my mission. Uh, I don't, I've never come at anybody in a negative way. If something people have come up at me in a negative way, always, you know, uh, whether they're, they're mocking me, making fun of me, trolling me. I've never come up against uh, anybody in a negative way about the only thing that I've done that, that because I'm human was was just to defend myself, you know, defend myself for for me, you know, where I've been, what I've done, you know, when when somebody that hasn't done nothing in their lives, and the only thing they know to, know to do is is lie and and troll people. Those are nobodies, you know. Those are you could say couch potatoes that they live in the the mother's basement or whatever. They've never really done nothing for themselves or in their lives. You know, I've been, I had to grow at a very young age, grew up at a very young age and become, become a young, uh, a man at a young age. I've literally worked all my life since I was a kid. I used to work in the fields before I became a young man. I used to go work. I was a migrant worker. We'd be working in the, in the, in the summer I'd be working during the summers at the age of nine years old. So I've literally worked all my life. So all these people, uh, they beg for money, but they don't want to work. Shame on you that a nine year old kid, I worked even younger than that. Who knows about seven cutting yards for veterans there in Romeville, Texas. You know, I used to cut the grass when I was just a kid. I could barely reach the handles, but I will cut it, you know. It's, it's a shame that somebody that, that was a kid was, was making more money, was making real money more, more than the money that you make by stealing, stealing money off of people, uh, on, uh, through YouTube and, uh, through your Facebook pages and groups. You should be ashamed of yourselves. You know, that's, that's crazy. You know, what has this world come to? Uh, you know what the saying goes. Money is the root of all evil. I can understand you're working hard for your money or you, you, you done paid the price by putting your life in the military and, you know, you're a disabled vet or whatever. But when you're out there with a cardboard box in your hand be uh, begging for money because you don't want to work and you, you have job opportunities, you know, you should be ashamed of yourself. Literally, you should be ashamed of yourself. 
So all these people decided to gather up and come out against Mr. Sias, Sergeant Sias. But I'm still here talking. Uh, I cannot share to to a lot of the groups uh, because I guess somebody reported reported me uh, numerous times, and I know they they were doing it because they they want to eliminate my Facebook like they did before in the past, and it's the same same people uh, from before. Uh, like I said, all in due time, uh, they will know. They will know all in due time. Uh, but that's what, what happened, uh, has been happening is if you haven't seen me post in any groups, it's because Facebook is not letting me because people kept on reporting my contact, kept on flagging me. It's a strategy that I see that some people that I know are doing and some strategy of other people are doing it. Or the question is, are they doing it to each other or are they doing it as they're in cahoots? Because about the only one that's been affected by it has been me. So that's where the question mark lays, lies right now is, are they in cahoots? I'm the one that's affected by it right now because I cannot share to any groups. I see them sharing away to each other back and forth, I guess. You could say playing the victim card so people could feel sorry for them. So uh, they can send donations to their podcast. So they're, they're, they're doing that, going back and forth, back and forth. That's what I see. Uh, I'm, I'm just talking truthfully right now. You know, normally I won't say nothing about nothing because it doesn't pertain to me. But that's what I see. Like I said before, I'm the one that I got affected by it. Because they don't want me to speak the truth. They don't want me to, to, to bring uh, the unseen war of the disembodied demonic Nephilim, of the demons, of, of, of anything unclean that's affecting humanity right now. They, they don't want me to do that. They, they, they're trying to stop me. But I can still post in my group. I can still post in my group. And I still can post on Spiritual Encrypted Encounters on, on uh, YouTube. And I can go live there now. So I'm going to continue to do my works in spite that of all the people that come up against me in a negative way. Uh, I'm still going to do the works that I do. Yeah, He hasn't stopped me, uh, stopped me in the past. He's not going to stop me now. Uh the only thing I can say to these individuals is when things happen to y'all, just remember what y'all did to me because it's going to come back at y'all. When, when, and when it comes back at y'all, just remember what y'all did to me because karma, that's the way karma works. Karma works in that manner. But you see, I've been knowing all along uh, of the things that were being done against me. I just try, I try to play along, you know, try to give people a chance uh, for them to to change their ways. Even though I know, you know, it's I just go with the flow of things. I used to do that thing in the military all the time, go with the flow of things. Even though I knew people didn't like me or, or, or whatever, you know, I would just go with the flow of things. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, is is go with the flow of things to see what happens, you know. Sometimes when you go with the flow of things, people change their ways. And there's times that when you go with the flow of things, people are going to be the same way they were when you went with the flow of things. Uh, they're not going to change their ways. They're going to be the same person that they are, like there was, and th they don't want change in their lives. They They want to point fingers at everybody else but besides themselves. Like they're like they're, they're they're victims of something. Like they're saints. That like in some kind of form in that nature, you know. And they're the ones that are playing the games. They're the ones that have the fake profiles. They're the ones that are sending people to go uh, target people on YouTube, to target people on Facebook. It's the same individuals. Uh, because I see the pattern. You know, I'll be. I've been watching everything through the sideline, you know, just watching what people do. So they know, you know, I know what's up. 
That's all I got to say. I know what's up. Uh, you know, sometimes you want to uh, give people benefit of the doubt, but man, they're not, they're not going to, if they can't change for themselves, uh, why should I expect them to change for me? <laughs> you know? They're going to be who they are, you know, regardless, they're going to continue to be the, the, the individuals that they are. There's nothing that anybody can do about that. So who's here with me right now? I see Sister Gloria Vela, Brother Roy Morales, uh, Sister Maria, S Sister Don, Brother Joe, uh, Primo Jesus Carvajal. I don't know who's here. I see two. I only see two people here, and there possibly could be more. Uh, I do not know, but I only see two. But yes, uh, but you see, I already knew this, uh, brother and sisters. Uh, to me, it's kind of like this. I've been in a lot of lion's dens, you know. I uh, If I get invited to go somewhere or whatever the case it is, I, I'll go. I don't care. Even though if that's in the enemy's lines, you know, I'll go because I'm not afraid uh, uh, to to handle something spiritually or to handle something physically. I'm not afraid. Um I've been there, I've done that. You know, I believe we all have been in those situations before where we've been there and done certain things in our in our lives. Uh that makes us who we are. You know, I continue to train daily. You know, I don't just train for one day and leave it at that. I, I try my best to train Monday through Friday. And you know, Saturdays I like doing some dancing, but you know, it's it's been it's been rough. Uh because I have been uh, hurting from from my foot, so it had been rough for me that I wasn't able to go dancing because that's my cardio. Yeah, just some people don't understand uh, the spiritual aspect of things, because then uh, they never see nothing. They never have walked that line. They've never been there. It's kind of like me, you know, it's kind of like people that try to have stolen valor. They haven't been where I've been. They haven't done the things that I've done in combat that I had to do because I had no choice. They haven't been in my shoes. Uh, so for somebody that's never been in combat, uh, they wouldn't know what fighting in the front lines is all about being a combat veteran they wouldn't know they could hear stories but they wouldn't know because you have to be there to understand where i come from in that sense of a way spiritually you would have to been there in my shoes when i was a kid uh, in mexico right when I had to help my brother out, I had to stay there with the medicine woman, with a complete stranger, in which I, I I witnessed all these other dark witches coming after her because of the work she would do. Uh, they were standing in front of her home, whether they were there in uh, wish uh, as witches with dressed in black. Or they were manifested into lechuzas. I would see them. I was, but I would stay inside the the little hut. I witnessed them. So you would have to be there to understand where I come from, to what the the wisdom and knowledge that I know. You no, know, you you would have to be in my shoes to understand that. I'm just sharing my stories of what I've been through. I'm sharing my wisdom and knowledge. But apparently, the cryptic community, they're all into into Bigfoot's, into the Bigfoot's arse. That's where their head is, in the Bigfoot's arse. Their head is so far up the Bigfoot's arse, or the Dogman's arse, that there's no arse because it's not a flesh being. It's kind of like a, they're like ostriches sticking their head in, the, in a hole in the ground. 
Because if there was a Bigfoot or Dogman, there will be one captured or there will be one dead. There will be somewhere, right? And the reason I'm speaking of like this right now is because of what was done to me by this these people that supposedly were my friends that invited me to their groups. I have screenshots of all the groups that reported me. I have screenshots of all the people that flagged me with it from these groups, groups where they were doing this intentionally. I got screenshots of that. So I'm going to put that all out so people can know why I cannot share to other groups because of the people that did this. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not yet, but I know who you are. I've been knowing who you are for a very long time. Uh, the, the, the only thing I have been doing is leaving groups that were doing that. And it's like, what's weird about it, most of these groups that were doing this were the crypto community. You know, the crypto community because I don't, I don't go to Bigfoot conventions. I don't dress up like a, like, you know, in a gorilla suit. Uh, I don't believe in the, in, in the Patterson film. I believe it's a hoax. Like all the other hoaxes, uh, that are in the crypto community or in the Bigfoot community. Uh, anybody can do a cast of supposedly a, a footprint. Anybody can do that. Now, you capture a Bigfoot and, and put them in, in habitation in a cage or like in a zoo. Then, you know, I'll, I'll apologize to y'all, but. I'm telling you right now, the things that you're witnessing out there is not that. What you're witnessing is a disembodied demonic Nephilim. That I have proof that I've captured photos of them. That I've captured short reels of them moving super fast. I got proof. Because I, I do go... I, when y'all go investigate, you're looking, y'all looking for a real life flesh creature. All the people that I know, that's what they go looking for. Something that's real. And you're looking for the wrong things because what I look for, I've captured. I've captured on fi on video. I captured on, on photos. And I believe y'all hate me for that. Because I'm showing more proof. I've, I believe within the past year, I've shown more proof in the crypto community in the paranormal community that what we're dealing with is not a flesh being and that's why y'all despise me and came at me in a negative way with trolls reporting my stuff because I've been doing the I've been doing the works I know what I was looking for I knew what I was looking for cuz I battled that I've seen force that I speak of. I battle that in Elms Grove and I've been battling that all my life. Uh, I know what I was looking for because I've been battling it spiritually all my life. See, that's the difference between me and y'all. Uh, you see a person, <laughs> all the videos that I see on TV of, of, of any capture that somebody, any kind of footage that somebody has a Bigfoot, you could literally tell it's a person in costume because the costume is baggy. I believe, I mean, I, I was in a Bigfoot group where they say that you can, couldn't, couldn't laugh at something and you couldn't talk about a picture because if you say something like, I believe it's a person in a costume, uh, they'll try to boot you out. Why, why is that? Wouldn't you rather hear the truth than believe a lie? And that's the problem with a lot of these groups in the Bigfoot community. They don't allow people to say what they have to say because they want, they have, they want the narrative. You could have 40, 40,000, 40, 40 million viewers for all I care. But if you put in material out there 
that's false, that's hoax, that's not real, then all the all the memories that you have is irrelevant because it's not real footage of something that's real in the flesh. It's it's false. Me, on the other hand, like I said before, I've done a lot of work this past year, and I placed a lot of footage that that footage by itself shows these beastly creatures that we speak about that look like Bigfoots, that they look like werewolves or what people want to call dogmen. I call them lycanthorps. You can see their images in my photos and my short reels. And y'all hate me for that. All I was trying to do is show y'all that what y'all dealing with is not something in the flesh. You could really, I think I got a video where one's looking at me, is smiling at me, is showing its teeth. Next thing you go, <laughs> it goes straight down into the earth, straight down into where it came from. Right, um, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna download that video and I'm gonna show it to y'all. I'm gonna work on it so y'all can see it. See it? What I'm talking about? That right there by itself, that proof how he did a a Houdini move. It was laughing at me, mocking me, and it was straight down into Mother Nature itself. People in the Pigfoot community just try to say Bigfoot is it's in the flesh. It's a hundred percent flesh creature. And then they want to mix it up. So well, maybe they're affiliated with UFOs. Maybe they can teleport, go into a different dimension. No. If something is 100% flesh, then it's 100% flesh like a bear, like a dog, like a cat, like any kind of uh, animal on earth. If it's 100% flesh, can't mix it up. But that's what y'all do trying to make excuses. I'm just talking bluntly right now, straight up. Y'all make up excuses just so you can feel good about yourselves. To add, uh, it's kind of like uh, like you're playing Pokemon or something, right? You're trying to add stuff to it to make it more, more dangerous or to make it more realistic. To this day, like I said, you haven't captured a Bigfoot there's no dogmen in captive. There's people that claim that they shot at one, that they killed one. BS. They said that they've killed, but there's no body. There's no pictures. BS. That's I call BS on that. And I hear a lot of the stories that people talk about. I call BS. I've had an open invitation to people to go to Elms Grove and check it out for themselves. There's a couple that went in there and they said they wouldn't go there at nighttime because of what happened during the day. So all these people, they come up against me in a negative way. They talk crap about me because they're clueless. I've I've had the challenge for a very long time about Elms Grove that I will take you to the hot spots where I witness things. But nobody took the challenge. Why is that? Why didn't nobody take the challenge? Why? You say you want to know the truth. You, you you doubt my story. Go to the location. Find out for yourself. I'll tell you what. By the way y'all are, some of y'all that are wicked, you go into that area of Elms Grove, you're going to be tore up because they, they know what's within you. Uh, and they will, they will make contact with you. When I used to live there, I don't know how many people I helped out. Whether <clears throat> it was an old man that was walking walking down the street. He was like a 70, 76 year old man. And he got attacked by a Didion. And he fell to the ground in the park. I went over there. I helped him up. And I started praying because I knew what I seen that attacked him. And I was praying. He was holding his heart like he almost had a heart attack. He had already had a heart attack before. He had a pacemaker. But I see what I attacked him. I helped the man. 
uh, took him to his house and I prayed around his home so he could be protected. He said his son was going to come for him. His son came and got him out of the area. But I've seen him get spiritually attacked by those unseen forces that are there in Elm's Grove. Uh, and it's just not in Elm's Grove. It's all around clean, four-hood area, uh, all of Central Texas. You can see that kind of activity happening everywhere. I'm sorry that I'm, I'm talking a little bit loud, but my hearing is kind of off. In which I probably do sound loud, but that's the way I've been ever since I got spiritually attacked out here about four months ago. It's kind of like I've been trying to catch up on time. Like it feels like I'm like two, three seconds away from everybody, you know, like my time, that like time is off for me. You know, I'm trying to come back to reality. Sooner or later, I'll get, uh, I'll get back in time, but that's what happened. When I placed the picture of those stairwells that were out there, what seemed to be stairwells, when uh, the surface stopped, they ambushed me. So it's been about four months that I hadn't been out here because I've been pretty, pretty bad, but I'm doing better now. They came at me in numbers. There was a, a, there was a lot of them, but I'm still standing. As y'all see, I, was, I still went into the area because I have my love foundation. I've been preparing myself spiritually. Uh, even though I've seen the activity that's been happening, I've seen, I already knew more or less that I was being targeted, that certain things were going to happen through Facebook. I've been knowing this. No, I just tried to give people a chance for them because I want to see people change their ways. I want to see people awaken spiritually, come into awaken spiritually and become a spiritual warrior. And there's just some that are lost. There are some that are being spiritually bonded. That they're literally, if you notice, brother and sisters, pay attention. They're just fighting, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because that's all they know how to do. That's what they're about. Because that's what's in their heart. I can, and I don't want to be involved in nothing like that. I got to I got to refocus and do the works that I was doing before all this BS started happening. You know, all these games that were being played. Uh, but I am refocusing. Um I have a new new phone that I bought because my old one was all messed up. It got it got messed up pretty bad. But anyways, you know, I don't want to Stay out here too long because activity might start picking up. Now that I'm out here, I still see see two people here with me. Uh, who's if whoever is here with me, give me a thumbs up because I I definitely cannot see who's here. I I, I the last comment I see here is yeah, it's like. My, my phone or something. I don't know what's going on. I see like four or five people, but on my live it says two. And I'm not seeing any comments. So if you're all commenting here, I just want to tell y'all that I will go back through this live and comment back to y'all. i just been having a lot on my plate, guys and, and girls, you know, whoever's here. You know, uh, I know that like I said, I've been targeted by many people. People have been, been talking badly about me because they don't know the left from the right. They don't know the spiritual aspect of things. Uh, so they want to talk. Instead of telling me in my face or telling me in person, I would respect them more in, uh, if they would tell me in my face. They talk talk to me behind my back. You know, If they're talking behind my back, uh, that's just them. That's their, who they are, you know. Talking behind the back will make them what backstabbers. If especially if I know them, they're they're talking behind my back. They're backstabbers, right? 
So, but that's okay. I'm used to that, you know. They're not the first backstabbers that I've run into in my life. Uh, I've run into worse things than them. So whatever little uh, power they think that I have, the only thing I have to say right now, I'm standing up for myself, is Brother Abe Sias, Sarah Sias, is the cryptic community, the paranoid community, do not know what the hell they're talking about. They don't. If they only knew that what they're doing by believing in them, fearing in them, is that they're leaving a spiritual opening so they can get spiritually attacked, not just attacked, destroyed by the DDN. Because the only thing they want is they don't care about you arguing, back, going back and forth. All they want is your soul. The soul collectors. That's what they want. They can't have a body. Uh, their, their bodies, they're here in this body form. They'll take your body, they use it for a little bit, then they'll destroy it to collect your soul. That's what they're here for. They're soul collectors. Does it really matter what form did the manifest to? Whether... It's a cryptid, an alien form. Does it really matter? If you're believing in them, then they already got you. They got you where they want you. It's like sometimes, you know, I'm just being obedient to what the Heavenly Father tells me. But sometimes I say to myself, so look, I've done showed them all this and, and still they're blind. Still they're bonded. They don't want to awaken. They get mad <laughs> because I'm showing them the truth. They get mad at the truth. And then sometimes they say, you know what? I'm just going to give up in this people. But that's not what I'm supposed to do. Uh, Jesus Christ didn't give up on us. He hasn't given up on us. That's why we're still here. No, I believe there there is people, good people that have goodness in them and love in them that he hasn't given up on us. But wait till the day. It's going to be a day that a lot that the majority of the people in this world are going to be spiritually bonded because they don't they don't believe in Jesus Christ, and they're going to be doing wicked things in which society itself is allowing wicked things to happen to make it okay. It's going to be a time. When certain things are going to happen, all, all, I, all I can say right now is I hope you're spiritually ready for what's to come. Because when it comes, it's not taking nobody's name. It's just going to take souls. I'm telling you, it's going to take souls. If you cannot prepare right now and take this seriously... Your soul's going to be lost in this unseen spiritual war. In which you will never be able to be gained. You're going to be lost. Whoever collects your soul, whatever demonic force, demonic entity collects your soul. When they, they go into the pit of the fire, where all the souls that, that the demon has collected will go into the fire also. I'm just being truthful right now, guys. There's going to be a lot of people, a lot of souls that are going to be lost. So I say to y'all is this. Think about what I'm saying. Tonight, I spoke bluntly. I spoke in truth. I know there's people that have done 30, 40, 50 years of cryptic zoology or whatever experience. But I have spiritual experience since I was a kid. I'm already 50-something years old, 55. I've been doing this since I was two years old. So I've had 53 years experience of fighting these unseen forces that are amongst us. So I have the wisdom and knowledge. 
I'm letting you know right now what's happening. And I want you to awaken and, and be ready. If you have love for your next of kin, your son, your daughter, your brothers, your sisters, your parents are still alive. Your grandfather is still alive. Prepare. Listen to me. Prepare spiritually. Start preparing yourself. Prepare them. Because the unseen spiritual warfare is here amongst us right now. Be ready. That's all I'm asking you. Stop looking for fairy tale endings, fairy tale stories, hoaxes, people in costume, fake stories. Stop believing in that because that right there is distracting you from your journey, from your path. All those distractions. It's because they don't want you to awaken spiritually. I'm here right now telling you to awaken. Wake up. Wake the hell up. Because of this unseen spiritual war is here right now. I'm here in an area right now where something could happen. But they know that I have a love foundation. They know that I might sound loud, but I'm not angry. Because I have a love foundation. I'm just telling y'all, brothers and sisters, be ready. Everything that I speak of here in uh, spiritual encrypted encounters, all these things that I speak of are written within the Bible. They're written in other books that were of the, not from the Bible, but they were supposedly part of the Bible in a different form. But anyways... I just want to say, Montana Love Foundation, love, light, and blessings to to y'all, to everybody that's here viewing right now. Like I said for, like I said before, I'm disappointed with a lot of people that, but I already knew. Just like I know things ahead of time. I'm, I've been knowing things ahead of. I try to give people the benefit of the doubt. I know when somebody is going to let me down. I know when somebody's in cahoots. I know when somebody is there to backstab me. I know all these things. I just go with the flow. You know why I go with the flow? Because whatever intentions I got for me, I'm not accepting, even though things might be happening right now. But those wrongdoings that have done to me will eventually make their way back to them. And that's when they're going to be saying, why is this happening to me? I've heard it numerous times over the years. Why is this happening to me? I didn't do nothing wrong to anybody. Hello. Think about me when that happens. When you start saying that, think about me. Because y'all came at me in a negative way. I didn't accept the negativity even though I knew what was happening. I didn't accept it. So when things start happening to you, well, why is this happening to me? It's because you got back what you dealt to me is going back to you. That's how that works. But anyways, everybody have a beautiful... For those that are true and that are really here in spiritually encrypted encounters because they want to be here, thank you all for all your support and for being a member here in spiritually encrypted encounters. Uh, I really appreciate y'all. Everybody have a beautiful, blessed evening. And God bless every single one of y'all and your family members. Peace out, everybody.